Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I'm doing some maintenance on this YBA 300 from Trainer Amplifier Company. And this has already been taken out of its case. We're just doing some basic maintenance. We had some scratchy pots here that I had to go and remove the preamp board to get some deoxid in there, clean that up. But this is made in November of 2013, according to the serial number. And between 2013 and 2016, they made a couple small minor updates to the circuit boards inside. And to bring it from that version, which I believe is version three, we're gonna bring it up to version four. And it's some very minor uh, additional capacitors that we're gonna be adding to the patch board in the back there. Here's a quick bird's eye view of the internals. And it's very, very well constructed, very neat. And it I just like looking at electronics in general, but Basically, I'm gonna jump right into the update from version three to version four. What we're talking about is the M1301, which is the preamp board, or at least the second part of the preamp board. This is the patch bay in the back where you have all your speaker outputs, your XLR DI out, your effects loop, all that stuff. And the only difference between version three and version four is that they add capacitors C40 and C41 on this U1 op amp chip on the positive 12 and negative 12 volt power rails. And all those capacitors are for basically is noise suppression. And it looks like U1 from studying the schematic drives the non-inverting and then inverting output of the XLR DI out, just cuts down on the noise floor a little bit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this board out and we're just going to mount those capacitors underneath this U1 chip. The newer versions actually have a special space for them with the traces going to it, but nothing that we can't go and add on the bottom and have it just be a little bit more quiet. Everything else in the amplifier is already updated to the most recent version, as far as I can tell, no reliability issues. So let's jump into it. I've removed the patch bay here on the back of the amplifier and I've just disconnected the output transformer so I can have easier access to it leaving this ribbon cable. But it looks like all my effort here is not going to be necessary because I just looked underneath and sure enough, there's the two missing capacitors that are soldered between the U1, which is on the other side of this board right here. So the modification was already done. A little anticlimactic, guys, I'm sorry. But good information to know in case a service center has not done the work. So if they did that, they also did any of the other updates to go from version 3 to version 4. Looks like I don't need to do any work, but it was a good learning experience. Got the amplifier back in its case, and man, this thing is bulletproof. There's four big screws on the bottom. There's two big screws on each side here, and that's how this thing is secured in. And this is a very unique amplifier in the sense that it's got a standard output transformer, but a toroidal power supply transformer, which is actually the part of the reason why this is light for a 300 watt tube amplifier. It weighs about 51 pounds. I am going to clean up the Tolex. First, I'm going to start off with a rag and some rubbing alcohol because it's been inside a garage for a little while. I've already cleaned the inside with some polish to get rid of all the dust, which was, wasn't too bad, actually. And then finally, this is my secret weapon. Some may or may not like or approve of it, but I use this stuff. It was meant to go on tires, but it actually makes the Tolex look really nice and dark and sheen. And I... Don't put that on anywhere else but the Tolex. Don't put it on the handles because it, it does make the amplifier slippery, but it really does punch up that deep black of the Tolex to restore that original luster from when the amplifier was new. So let's go ahead and do that. And here is the result of the black magic tire shine on the Tolex after I cleaned it up with some rubbing alcohol. You can see that it is much darker than before and it's all nice and cleaned up. Pretty much looks brand new. Here we are on back of the amplifier. I'm just covering my serial number, although I doubt that this amplifier is under warranty. The amplifier comes stock with 6L6GC power valves here, and these are Ruby Tube brand. I believe they're from China. And then underneath, there are three 12AX7s, uh, two are for the preamp, 
And then we have, for the face splitter, another 12 AX7 here. These are all Sovtex inside the amplifier that it must have come stock like that. Uh, and then finally, we have a Ruby tube. It is a 12 AU7 for the pre-driver to the power valve section. And then, as I mentioned, you can see the toroidal transformer is mounted on the side wall there. And then we have the output transformer, which is mounted on its side, facing down on the opposite side for a total of 51 pounds. I'll start off with the more straightforward, simple stuff here on the output section. This is the speaker output. It gives you one speak on jack, and then you have two quarter inch output jacks for the speaker outputs. You have an impedance selector switch of either four ohm or two ohm. Now, uh, forward on eight ohm cabinets or eight ohm loads, you are able without issue to run at, on the four ohm tap of the output transformer into an eight ohm load. However, you will not get the full 300 watts of power. You will get somewhere around 250 watts, and this amplifier will be just fine running at that mismatch. If you are planning on running 8 ohm cabinets all the time and you want to have the full 300 watts, there is a jumper setting on this board here where you would have to you it would have to be done by a technician if because you would have to solder some. Uh, jumper wires there to essentially change this from a 4 ohm and then this would become the 8 ohm tap even though it's labeled as 2 and then that modification you would then be able to get the full 300 watts at an 8 ohm load just in put, putting that out there i usually use my 4 ohm cab so i will tend tend to use the 2 ohm load or the 4 ohm if i'm using my half stack so i don't need to do that modification over here, we have the effects loop here, which is, I believe, post-EQ. And then we have the XLR DI out, which is an electronically balanced one. We have a pre or post-EQ, and then the ground lift for pin one for any ground loop issues. There is a buffer tuner send. And again, I've mentioned this in previous videos. I really don't use that feature, but it is there for those that like to use it. Now this is where things get interesting, and I believe Trainer was one of the first amplifier companies to employ such a setup, but this is the solid state management system where it each of the, so there's 12 valves total, and think of it as six sets of two. Each section is monitoring the current, uh, either low or high, of each pair of power valves here in the power valve section. And what you can do is you can bias each pair individually with all these sections pretty cool and you also have uh the bias reference so if you were to take your multimeter and go between this point and this point and this point and this point you can actually measure the millivoltage of each pair of valves now what they're likely doing you voltage doesn't tell you anything you want to know the current what they've likely done and i'll have to look at the schematic but there's likely a one ohm resistor between this point and this point and then another one at this point and this point and so on and so forth to basically measure it that keeps the math simple so if you're measuring say 50 millivolts you're getting 50 milliamps of current on that pair of valves makes it a little bit easier only on these protect features if that light turns on what it's doing it's activating a latching relay inside disconnecting that particular valve pair from ground taking them out of circuit. So that usually happens if there's an overdraw of current, for example, or there's a short circuit. And this amplifier can still run. I think up to five pairs of valves can be locked out and this amplifier would still run. That's pretty impressive. Although you would lose a lot of output power, that is how that protection system works. And then what you can do is when turn off the standby in the front of the amplifier, that will reset all of those relays. And then if you flip the standby on again, that should reset the system. And if, again, if there's still a problem with those pairs of valves, it will again, lock out that pair until the problem is ratified. And letting the amplifier run for about a half an hour before I went and get, did this test here, but I used Deoxit D5 on all the potentiometers when I had it out of the case to clean them up, rotate them back and forth a few times. I was corrected on one of the forums on, for Trainer. Uh, it is better to use Deoxit F5, which is meant for pot faders and potentiometers. You can use D5, but it's probably a little too good for its given application. The F5 version, I'll link into it below, is great for, again, potentiometers and for faders, like sliding faders. 
anything that moves basically. D5 is good for like cleaning out input jacks or output jacks, things like that. But I think here a little background noise of the amp, not too bad. Move very easily. But no more crackling. Cool. This is ready to go. I also went ahead and checked the bias and this amplifier is extremely easy to bias. You just look at the indicator lights. Now I did go and check with my digital multimeter on the current and the current is all within like one to two milliamps of each other. So it's very, very close. And that's also lending to the fact that the amplifier is very quiet when it's idling. You can hear it. A little bit of background hum, if you can hear it at all, but it's extremely quiet. I'm happy. This beast is ready to roar. All right, guys, I'm going to end the video here. I can keep this video strictly for the technical and maintenance. Any uh, background questions on how these amplifiers are assembled inside, if you're ever having a problem. I will be doing a separate video at some point in the future here with some sound samples. I did check the DI. The DI sounds nice and quiet. The noise floor is very, very low, which is great. And a big shout out to Mike Holman. He was very helpful over up at the trainer in Canada for any of my technical questions. This amplifier is ready to roll. Pretty excited to check it out for a lot of my summer gigs that are outdoors. And having some extra power outdoors is definitely, this is the right tool for the job. Thanks so much again, guys, for supporting my channel. I will see you guys on the next one.